Hey family and welcome back. So when should you believe that your partner is going to change? Especially when you have been asking for change and you have not seen much of anything or it is just very slow, slow paced, especially at a much slower pace than you would want, than you even um, thought what it was going to take. It's taken longer than you thought, or like, what are the things, what are the signs, what are the things that you should actually look for to say, okay, things are getting better. They're moving much slower than I would like for them to move, but they're getting better. So I'm going to stay around because I know that if I stick this out, then our relationship will thrive. So I'm going to give you five, excuse me, hit the camera, sorry. I'm going to give you five things to look for and five things to even think about. So you can say, basically make an informed decision to say, okay, I can stick around through this a little while longer. And also know that you are not alone and it does not matter what the issue, problem, concern is, you're not alone. Each and every one of us ebbs and flows. Our relationships ebbs and flows is what I was trying to say. The relationship itself ebbs and flows. It goes through great times, it goes through bad times, it goes through peaks, it goes through valleys, it goes through celebrations, it goes through deaths and funerals, not necessarily your relationship, but just relationships in general. So there is something that you have to understand that even when you think that you are alone and going through everything alone, you are not. Now, who am I and why should you listen to me? My name is Marshawn Olanio. I am your favorite life and relationship strategist and I help women who are married or in long-term relationships to stop feeling disconnected and unloved and shift them to feeling heard, understood, and appreciated. So now if that sounds like something that you need help with, especially in your romantic relationship, then send me a message. You can send me an email or you can send me a DM. You can send me, um, get on my calendar by going to Calendly, it's down in the description box below. So any one of those avenues to reach out to me to say, hey, I need some help, do that because my, one of my purposes in life is to help to decrease the divorce rate while simultaneously increasing the marriage rate. All right, so now with that being said, let's jump into the signs, the things that you should look for when you're deciding, should I believe that my spouse is going to actually change. So the very first thing is that you want to look for his or her involvement. Involvement in a proven process and the process has to go toward some type of a change. So in this case, if you're talking specifically about your relationship, you're looking for some type of change. Is your spouse, is your partner in some type of coaching program? Is, are, are they going to some type of therapy? Are they talking to a preacher, a pastor, an imam? Like whatever word you wanna insert there. Are they talking to an elder? Are they getting some very, very good advice that they're actually implementing into your relationship? So the involvement, and it's not just being involved in it, involved in it. You want to be looking for involvement in a process that is going to help change that behavior or change your spouse around so they can be a better spouse, so you can be a better spouse, so you guys can build a healthy romantic relationship together so it doesn't feel one-sided. So you're looking for an involved process for their change. Now, the second thing that you're looking for is a monitoring system that's actually in place for check-ins. So what this, this actually means is you can be the person that's checking in with their spouse to say, hey, did you go and talk to the therapist? Um, or hey, did you actually make the appointment? Um, how, is, how are things going? Maybe there's something that is actually happening internally with him or with her that she, he or she is not comfortable sharing with you as of yet. That's okay. But you want them to, basically what you're looking for in the check-ins is for him or her not to be agitated or irritated that you number one just brought it up yes that's the main thing you don't you're not looking for any ir irritation you're just looking for so basically yeah I've gone one or two things have actually happened and without pressing you know pressing the issue because obviously if he or she needs to go through some type of um, marital counseling or uh, relationship counseling rela relationship coaching then there's something that's actually happening that's going on and maybe he or she was not ready to share it with you and so maybe they're able to share it in those private sessions with an outside party and maybe they're not ready to share this stuff with you so that's very important for you to remember because when you're doing the check-in you don't want to press and prod for information you want to allow this information to be 
told to you, to be ceded to you. So that person feels like they still have a sense of privacy until they are ready to share whatever it is that's actually happening with him or with her. So again, just like, just okay. And, and you can look at this like this, you know, people who are out there who have um, kids or um, yes, let's go with kids. So you have kids out there and especially school age kids that have to do homework, right? So just think about it like this. Your spouse is the kid in this situation and you're the parent. And why am I saying it like this? Because your child, nine times out of 10, now there are exceptions to the rule and everything that I speak about, but nine times out of 10, that child or children do not do their homework unless you ask them about it, right? And then you have to go a little bit deeper. Let me see the homework, right? So there are check-ins even with your children, specifically when they're reaching milestones. And in this case, we're talking about their homework. So your spouse is no different. Your partner is going to be no different, especially if you're thinking, is this my last straw? Am I actually going to stay or I'm going to go? So you're, the, the check-in is something to hold them accountable to make sure that he or she is doing what they said that they were going to do in order to switch and change and shift this relationship around so you can get back to falling in love and having a lot more sex, etc. right? Just enjoying the relationship with one another so one party doesn't feel like they're doing the relationship all alone, uh, basically experiencing that unrequited love. You don't want to do that. The third thing that you want to look for is self-sustaining motivation. You do not want to be the only party that's hoping and wishing and praying and uh, have to basically nag them in order to go to therapy or go to the coaching. Did you do the homework? Like you don't want to feel like you have to nag them. You want them to be able to do this stuff themselves. So look at the behavior. How many books are they reading on relationships? Or again, are they involved? Are they open to the fact to say, okay, I need to go to coaching or therapy because what I'm doing right now is not working. I want to be better. I want to do better. I don't have the tools or the strategies to do better. And so I have to find somebody who can help me get over the obstacles that are keeping me stuck in the same situation. So coaching, therapy, books, seminars, conferences, um, podcasts, look up for, look for the new experiences that, that they're trying to um, implement into the relationship. Like what are they doing new? And again, you should not have to always push and prod and poke and say, can we do, they should be doing this stuff on their own as well because you cannot keep up the motivation for him or for her. He or she has to do that for themselves. Now you might start it, right? You might start it. You might give them the motivation to start doing these things, but you cannot sustain their own motivation to be better in the relationship, to show up better in the relationship, to be better off where both of you are enjoying the relationship. You, you just can't keep that up. The person has to want to do that for him or herself. The fourth thing is they have to admit at some point that they need this change, that this change is so needed because it is destroying everything that they have built, everything that they have wanted, all the stuff that they dreamed about, all the things that they actually attained. It is affecting all of this stuff, but they have to be able to admit that they need the change and then do something about it. It's not just talking about it, it's the actions that have to follow behind their words because the action is the part that is going to get you to the next level. When we're scared to have those conversations, but we want the love and attention and affection, the only way that you're gonna get it is to keep speaking up because you have to remember that is your love language, not your spouse's love language necessarily. Just That's just for an example. But again, he or she must admit and even own to the fact that they have an issue, that they have a problem and that they cannot do this thing on their own. And so they have to want to do it. But again, they have to verbally admit that they have an issue, that they have a problem that they need help with. So that's number four. The fifth thing is that they need a support system. And that support system in this instance is you. So are you actually supporting your spouse or are you being his or her parent? Are you supporting your spouse or are you, are you always poking, prodding and doing all of that stuff in order to get the attention? Are you being a great support system where he or she can lean on you about any and everything? Where at some point they feel super comfortable enough to open up to you to allow you to into their inner world about all of the stuff that's internally affecting him or affecting her. So you guys can grow together. So that distance that you feel right now can go away. 
And this is going to take practice to do. It is not something that is going to happen overnight. So if you're, if you are not built to be the support system, if you are not built for this to take a period of time for you to see the fullness of the joy, the fullness of the happiness between the two of you, then you probably should walk away. And that's just me being real. That's just me being real because relationships are a journey. They are a marathon. They are not the 